Welcome to another episode of the Pete Potential Success Show. My name is Paul Chua. I'm an entrepreneur, business strategist, real estate investor, speaker, and also best-selling author. And every single day, I help others unlock the potentials and guide them to succeed. Today on the show, we have another amazing guest on the show. We've interviewed celebrities, entrepreneurs, business CEOs, multimillionaires, athletes, artists, you name it, to just find out how they're able to become successful, their journey, uh, how they're able to overcome adversity and challenges, and of course, their keys to success. And this next guest is absolutely somebody who can add to that, not only because she's gone through it, she's done it herself, but also she's helped a lot of other people do it themselves as well. Uh, she has over 25 plus years of experience as a strategic creative uh, brand marketer. Uh, she's she jumps into your company, your uh, your business's DNA, and really finds out how she's able to help you grow it and enhance it and make it more and more successful. Uh, she does uh, an amazing job with helping you get your message out there, sharing your story. Uh, she helps you find that clarity to align it with your values. And it's absolutely amazing because I've got an opportunity to share a virtual stage with her. And she was highly energetic, great, uh, great content, great insights. And I'm like, you know what, I have to have her on. So I'm very, very excited to have her here. So please welcome brand and culture consultant, show host of Going Commando, uh, Ms. Angela DiMarco. Hi, Fung. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor hey. to be here. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing your time and some of your stories uh, coming up. And uh, always a joy uh, seeing you and uh, speaking with you. So let's get right to it. How how did you become this amazing brand marketing consultant? Uh, it's not every so day you wake, up, like you wake up and go, you know what, I'm going to be this consultant in branding and marketing. Or were you born saying, you know what, this is what I want to do? Oh, God, no. <laughs> God, no, God, no. Um, so uh, I appreciate the introduction. I'm like, wow, that check sounds amazing. <laughs> um, no, I, um, I, I wanted to go to college to be a doctor. That was like, I went pre-med. And um, after the first year of bio, I couldn't do it. I was like, okay, maybe I'm not meant to be a doctor. Um, and I remember taking an art class. Uh, I was kind of like waffling around in college. I remember taking an art class and I like was walking around my portfolio and I had charcoal under my fingers and I had a T-square hanging out and I'm like, whoo. And then I found out you can have a career making things pretty. And I was like, wow, I want to do that. So I, um, I grew up in advertising in New York City. I um, started as a designer, art director, creative director up the, up the chain. Um, and in 2008, when we hit the recession, um, I got laid off from my last agency job in the city and with a couple of friends, we decided to create this kind of like boutique -y kind of shop where we assembled the teams that a client needed because it was, nobody could afford these big agencies anymore. There was so much bloat, so much swelling. Um, of course we were only focusing on the small businesses. I've always had a, a, a passion to help the little guy because, Knowing what I know and all the things that I've learned in my corporate career, um, it, it, I, I just try to make that accessible to to everybody, you know, so I've helped uh, solopreneurs, I've helped small businesses, I've helped, um, you know, even, you know, we, I've taken on jobs, like I went full time at another place um, with a manufacturer, and I helped this whole, this old company kind of rebrand and everything. And, and uh, I, I've just, the whole idea of helping people find that light inside of them. You know, the, these founders start a business for a reason. Yeah. So helping them reconnect with that reason. Um, but the magic of what we do now is um, I have partnered up with Dana Sardano. She's my co-collaborator, co-conspirator, <laughs> co-everything. Um, and Dana brings this empowerment piece, personal empowerment piece. So we have a program called Corte Credo where Dana focuses on the, the individual of the organization, each individual helping them empowered, helping them to ask for their needs, helping them to feel what connected to what they want to do. And I help the company from a vision perspective. Um, you know, are you guys connected to the brand? Do we need to redo a rebrand? Do we need to even just talk about it? How is the culture? How is everything affected? And this two-pronged approach is really, really unique. Um, it's just, it's like a next level stuff from what I used to do just with, just with the branding, you know? So that, that's where we are now. Very cool. Was there anything from your medical background that uh, allows you to transfer those skills over to what you're doing now? <laughs> My medical background. I can put a Band-Aid on a boo-boo. Uh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Once you said that, I'm like, oh, that's why you're talking about brand DNA. And then now uh, you can put a Band-Aid on there. 
I guess I guess there's there's a little bit of that because if you think about it, our cellular structure defines what we look like, right? Oh. And a brand is not just what their logo is. A brand is how they tick, what they want to do in life, what are their core values, and understanding like then you do that, what it looks like on the outside. So I guess, uh, yeah, maybe there was a little piece of me that's still pulling in that, that want to be a doctor situation. <laughs> uh, you talked about how you love working with the uh, solar pioneers, the, the small business ones. Now, one of the most common things that happens or in their minds is that, oh, we're so small. How do we compete with those big people? How do we compete with the uh, big companies, with the big brands? We're just a small company. Who's going to come here? And sometimes that mindset stops them from even starting their business. Yeah. So what do you do to help them with that? How do you help them focus on what they need to do and, and also compete with some of those big, big names? Yeah. Okay. So first is to take out the word compete. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to shift our our world from competition to collaboration. So it, it has to be that um yeah as an individual we have a unique we have unique skills. I cannot do what you can do. And I and I, as long as I look and admire that in you instead of saying, ooh, I wish I had that, you know, like I want to be that. Well if I want to be that then I've got to work on it myself. Right. So you can have two shops next to each other selling the same exact thing. Like, let's say you've got these uh, two ice cream shops and one is um, a Froyo shop where you make your own and build your own. And one is like, um, you know, Italian, whatever ice cream. It's just like different. You f- you figure out what their specialty is, what the uniqueness is. And that's what you infuse. And then it's not, then it's, then it's a matter of, well, someone's going to either gravitate towards the Italian ice cream or to build doing themselves. And, and you find your, you help them find their people. Uh-huh. But the, the biggest thing for, for me is um, because I've made my career shift a couple of times and I left the world of advertising marketing to start my own business. And it, it started with the idea. And then it started with getting the LLC, which turned into an S corp, which turned into a Delaware C corp because of whatever reasons <laughs> I didn't know, but and getting the URL and designing a little logo and a layout page. That was it. I still had my full-time job, but I still had, and my idea was cooking in the background mm. and it was cooking and it was cooking. And I was building a business plan while I was working my job. And then all of a sudden I couldn't not do it anymore. You know, I got some funding and, and that's what it is. It's really just taking those small steps, finding those small steps, get started and then see where it unfolds. But don't worry about the big guys. Don't worry about the competition that's out there. Don't let that stop you. <laughs> no, another uh, showstopper, well, not showstopper, bottleneck that people hit is this. They sit there going, yeah, I'm going to create this business. I'm going to create my brand. I'm going to spend time, money on my logo, my website. Everything looks pristine. I launch it. And then they sit there and go, hmm, where is everybody? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I've you, been there. <laughs> how do you help them with that? Like, especially if uh, people have limited budget or limited amounts of money to actually spend on continual marketing, continual uh, promotions and all that kind of stuff. Like if you don't do that, nobody knows you exist, even though if you have the most beautiful website out there. So what do you do to help them? Well, first of all, I wouldn't, I I would never suggest anybody spend a lot of money on marketing and advertising and branding Mm -hmm. from the get. Um, The whole thing with branding is consistency. So if you can, and I have a, I have a workshop. So I have a workshop called uh, brand DNA to find your U chromosome. And we go through what's your purpose, your vision, your mission, your unique selling point. And as long as you know, these, these particular core things of your brand, you can come up with a simple logo. Logos can change over time. They can evolve, but just be consistent with, with this messaging, figure out what this core is. Then, then, then infuse that into everything you do. The next thing is grassroots, social media, networking, like do not underestimate the power of, of it. That's how we met. <laughs> That's how I met through Linda, through so-and-so, so-and-so. Um, I have had enormous success with um, just posting consistently on LinkedIn every single day. I do a, I do a reel from our, our show and um, I comment, I interact with people that are collaborators um, and with, uh, I'm not out there like seeking business. I'm just like, kind of just building up my, my network and then you tap into your network and ask them for help, you know? So I, then, then when you have traction and you have some money, 
then I suggest you would come to someone like me to do like, you know, let's, okay, now let's make this visually cohesive. Let's, cause you're going to start hiring. Your brand is involved when you're hiring people, what kind of people you're bringing on, how do your core values relate and translate um, and how you communicate with your customers. So it's, it's all, you know, all in baby steps, but you don't have to spend a lot of money in the beginning. Now I'm trying to put myself into the shoes of those people who's trying to get this started. So then what you just said is, okay, jump onto LinkedIn, get a profile, start connecting with people, messaging people. But then the next thing happens is that, what do I say? What, what how, how do I reach out to, I'm shy. I don't, I don't, what are they going to think about me? All those kind of things come into their mind and they go, you know what? I'm just going to message them tomorrow. <laughs> well, then it, the, the only thing that's stopping you is yourself. Hmm. You know, if you want that life, you have to work for it. You have to put yourself out there. And, you know, if anybody does watch our show, Going Commando with Angela and Dana, we are fully authentically ourselves, unapologetically, um, because we're trying to show people just be you. Whether you're funny, don't, don't worry about the airs. I, I had um, someone give me feedback the other day. If you t- we have this thing called the organization assessy and it's to help you see if there's awareness or problems within your organization that we could help you with. And we're very professional. We've got the goods to back it up. But one of our questions is um, who, who runs the joint? Take me, take us to your leaders. Right. And if that little piece, like that's so you know who you're working with, right. That's on purpose. Like, but the whole thing is not like shtick, you know? And that person was like, Oh, that's that makes me uncomfortable. Okay. So that makes you uncomfortable. You're not our people. So as long as you go out there, remember, you have that 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 core defined for you. That's where you start. You start talking about your area of expertise. You start posting about it. You just post every day. Don't worry if you get one comment, one like, it doesn't matter. Always like your comments. I learned this. Always like your own comments and your posts to help with the algo. And um, also don't put external links in your post because LinkedIn doesn't like it. Um, and I, I I pay for the premium. If that does anything, I don't know, but it's not cheap. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if that helps. But again, just, just be you, just be you. And even if you say something little, but I always add value because you have value to add. Mm-hmm. Do you find yourself um, censoring at all? Especially today, like there's so much, so much out there that people go, oh, if I say this about something, I might get canceled. If I say my opinion about this or what I, what I value, that might get viewed as a different perspective from somebody else. And then they won't like me or something like that. Like, how, do you see yourself stopping yourself from posting certain things that you're very strong on, but eh, I'm going to decide not to put it up? Oh my gosh, Fong, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I want people to either be taken with me or, or to not like me. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather be weeded out. You know, we had one short on YouTube because we put everything on YouTube too. And one short went like, you know, in our world, it was like, it got like 1600 views, which is a lot compared to the other ones, 60, 70 views. And, um, and all of the other ones were either people liked it or they didn't do anything. So like or indifference, right? Um, This one had like 26% dislikes. And we were like, yes, (laughs) because I want to, I I want to attract my people. Mm -hmm. And I, and that should be the idea is just, that's why if you are, did you ever, did you ever like talk to someone and then they say like, they do a certain hobby and you're like, what? I can't picture you doing that hobby, you know? And it's like, well then, so, so they're living these two kind of personas, their professional persona. And then there's their personal where they're probably like really fun. And like, this is where they're lit up and where the person you'd want to hang out with. Isn't it exhausting to keep up two personas? Wouldn't you rather just perfect the one? And just be all of you because it, you're, you you attract like your energy. It's like you can feel it when somebody is inauthentic. Yep. So I just say, nah, I don't censor shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, you work with uh, companies. You work with individuals uh, on their on their brand and their their culture. Have you found something similar as to what is the first signs of those going the wrong way? Oh, you know, our program is so customizable because it can be anything a lot. hmm, That's a really good question. Mostly it's that people get so bogged down in the day to day that they lose sight and they don't feel that there's an importance to the branding. Mm -hmm. 
and how, like how important that is to the culture, to the customer experience, to everything. And um, I'll give you an example. The last company I worked for is called Visiontron. They're a manufacturer of stanchions. Um, it was my first in-house job as the director of general uh, director of branding and general marketing. And they wanted to do a rebrand. So I was like, okay, we have to have a strategy session. And they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa we're going to do this. We're going to talk about this stuff. And like hemming and hawing. And they're so disconnected from the people. But it was so important. Like when they were done, they were like, oh, we didn't realize that was the, an issue with the back office and the front office. And we didn't realize all this stuff. And so then I had the owner buy in because he realized the value of it once we went through it all. Like he saw how important it was. So I think that's the biggest challenge is to convince people that this is where time and money should be spent. But when you're bogged down the day to day and just trying to make sales and stop the bleeding and all that stuff, like I get it, you know, but it doesn't have to be this daunting thing. It doesn't take a big daunting experience to turn the ship. You just got to start, right? So it's just a conversation. Are, are there anything that you could recommend to maintain that consistency? Like, I know, like, if people are, are so focused on making sales, uh, the bottom dollar and all that kind of stuff, but are there certain things that they can do on a consistent basis or implement into their business so that they can maintain that culture to be content or even good? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, I like how... Um... I've worked with, I worked in big agencies and stuff like that. And they would bring in some amazing keynote speaker, like a Lewis Holmes. And you have this big event and everyone's like, yes, this company's awesome. Everything feels great. And then come Monday, everyone forgets and they're back in their day to day. Right. Like that's kind of like, that seems to be the MO for most companies. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that we work is not only do we create the plan, but we're with you until you get your sea legs. So we create, like we have empowerment workshops, we have employee, um, you know, connection um, trainings and things like that. And, and you kind of have to do that kind of work on a consistent basis. And you also have to walk the walk. If you say we care about our employees' wellness and well-being and their happiness, which leads to a better bottom line, right? You have a happier employee, they're going to work harder, you know, be more productive. Um, then you have to commit to doing it. So if it's like a weekly thing, or if it's a monthly check-in, if it, whatever it is that either we're running or we teach you how to run, it's just constantly doing that part of it. So whatever it may be. And if it's a branding situation where everybody's happy in the company, but the brand feels disconnected to how you're selling the comp you know, the customers, then there are brand infusion things that you can do on a weekly basis. You know, we used to have a we would, we would like hit up a, an employee and be like, okay, what's the third core value? And they'd be like, oh, and they'd have to tell us and then they'd get a prize, you know, here's $10 gift card, you know, like stupid things like that, that kind of keep people on their toes, but, um, but infuse like fun, like, you want to have fun, life is fun, life is fun, <laughs> <laughs> work should be fun too. <laughs> well, some of that fun comes from creativity and you're somebody who is very creative. You're able to come up with ideas, uh, fun activities. How do you maintain that creativity? How do you come up with creative stuff? Is that something you've done on a ba like daily basis where you go, oh, I'm going to expose myself to all these things all the time so that things come to me? Or were you born creative? I think I was born creative. <laughs> I, I, I have just, I've always been, I've always been this way. I, I can't not be. So when, um, at one point, my partner and I, we, we had a big pivot. And uh, we almost had a breakup and we're about to do an episode about the breakup letter because it was scathing. I'll tell you all about that later <laughs> offline. Um, but we we came down to it and we were like, what do each of us really, really need? What do we want in life? And my whole thing, the reason why I'm doing my business, the reason why I, I get up in the morning is because I want the freedom to create. It's all I want to do. I want to create businesses, experiences, um, travel, a, a, anything. Like I am inspired by everything. I'm inspired by the human spirit. And I, I can't, I can't not be, I've written a book. I play guitar. I, I, I just, I just, I, I can't not. And, um, and I so badly just want to give what I have to help people with their businesses. Like it really is a joy to help these small guys, like get that, get the same stuff. Like I, I have, but you know, enterprise level experience, but I want to help the little guy because they deserve it. They're fighting it. They're doing it. They're my people. <laughs> awesome. Uh, do you have a go-to success story that you go, mm, that was my most creative, most proudest moment of uh, helping somebody build their business or helping somebody with their brand? Hmm. You know, I do have, uh, 
One that comes to mind, and it, again, so so my my uh, I think I've said this somewhere else. My my KPIs, I don't I don't measure by like sales goals and that kind of stuff and numbers. I I just I'm not I'm a creative. <laughs> I at the spreadsheets and the numbers, but um, I worked with a perform a physical therapy company, a practice, and we did their whole branding and we helped them come up with their core values. And the owner came to us probably six months after we had done the rebrand, um, and he said. I use those core values when I'm hiring somebody and they were, you know, we sweat the small stuff, we care from the core and we um, are educators and scholars. And so he uses, he used those three core values that we defined and he built his questions and and, an interview process. So he was able to attract people that were aligned with his vision and mission. And that to me was a success. That was a huge success because here's this guy, his, his whole business changed because he knew who he was. And he knew who he wanted to attract and who he wanted to work with. And then that created this beautiful culture. I mean, they would have dinner parties. We did like improv things. It was awesome. Awesome. So I'd say that was probably a good one. So in contrast, is there one that you were so creative, you had this great vision and it just didn't, you know, follow up to what you expected to do, to do. Like uh, a want wah situation. <laughs> and, and it turned out to be one of the greatest learning moments for you. What can you share one of those? Oh, you know, this wasn't for a client. This is for myself. Mm-hmm. So I left my my last job with that with that company to build um finduniquelyyou.com. And that was the first that was the first level of the business we've evolved today. Finduniquelyyou.com is still there, but I I built the MVP. I spent a lot of money on it. I I didn't do all the things you're supposed to do. I knew the profit market research and all those things that I've learned since. <laughs> so, so many founder mistakes. Um, and I put all of my time and effort into this beautiful product and this beautiful environment. And I just, I was going for the wrong people and it fell flat. And so that was my personal learning experience. I mean, talk about how much I learned. I spent a lot of money didn't have an audience, you know, did all the things backwards. Um, but I would never call it a failure because I learned so much and it has evolved into what it is today. We still use the platform for our education purposes and we have um, content creators still uh, create. We, we teach content creators how to take their, their content and turn it into a monetizable workshop. And then they perform their workshops on our platform. So, but that's become, that's like become like so tertiary to what we're doing. So it, it wasn't all for naught, but it was definitely like, a, oh, that didn't work out the way I really wanted it to. <laughs> well, it wasn't wasted. So you still have something come out of it, which which is which is nice. Now, yeah. when it comes to branding and marketing, storytelling is very, very important. And mm-hmm. everybody has a story. It's how to tell that story that counts. Um, where Where do you find most people fall flat when it comes to storytelling? You know, I think that that being authentic and being true and being open and vulnerable, those are like really hard to do. Like you were saying before, you know, like, I don't want to post content. What if I say something stupid? You know, (laughs) Um, we have something I actually I'd love for you to do it if you're if you're open to it. But we have um, something that we're running for LinkedIn. It's called uh, For Those Who Rise and Shine. And you have nine minutes to share a story of a moment where you stepped into your greatness. And it's a monologue style and we record it for you. And we're going to start running the series next week. Um, We've already got some amazing stories in the can. So if anybody is interested, um, I'll give you the link and maybe you can share it with your audience. Um, It's free. You know, you could buy the asset if you want, but it's free to do. um, And it can help you practice sharing that story. Just even a little a little moment because everybody has those moments. Everybody has them. So, um, and we celebrate. I mean, I'm also a publisher. Uh, I'm an author. <laughs> we we do this thing where we're sharing stories. So, storytelling is all of our is all of our, our tagline is story sharing for the sake of humanity. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just just be you. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I would love to be involved with that. Let me know. Uh, with with all the stuff that you do, you're also a host of a podcast. Uh, you have a show with your your partner there, and how how did that come about? How how did you go? Hmm, I'm already busy. Listen <laughs> to the other two. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Writing my LinkedIn bio thing, it's like, oh god, what do we focus on here? Um, so Dana and I had this idea 
to celebrate our U instructors. That's what we called them. So findinguniquelyu.com, we had U, we have U instructors and we wanted to help showcase them. So we came up with this idea for a show called Cuddle Talk. You had to come in your pajamas. You had to have a stuffy. You had to sit somewhere, not at your desk and just like, like let it all hang out, right? So it was called Cuddle Talk and we would interview our U instructors just to help people get to know them. And then Dana and I started doing like, well, we don't have a guest this week. Why don't we just do one of us? And we called it Going Commando because it was just the two of us. And um, and then everything kind of shifted from finduniquelyu.com. And she was like, we still like doing the Going Commando. Why don't we just do that? Just do the two of us. And we kind of like reformatted it and reshaped it. So season two was around a certain thing. Season three has been around Dana's book. And it's just become like such a joy. Like, like you do this every Friday. Ours is like every Monday, you know, I'm recording. I taught myself how to edit in Adobe Premiere and Dana cuts these reels and that's what we post every day. And we just have so much fun doing it. So much fun. And it's just like, we really do it for us. You know, it's just, it's just for us. Dana is so amazing with this knowledge she has about personal empowerment, like so beyond, so beyond. You you will love her. So you should definitely have her on your show. She's freaking amazing. Um, but we spend a lot of time focusing on her content and how to feel empowered and how I've grown based on the things that she's taught me. Like I have, I have a direct line to her. She's my, my red phone, you know? <laughs> um, so we kind of just do that every week and it's just been a blast. It's been a blast. Wow. Awesome. Now, with all that going, you also have a family. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, them. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what's the what's that magical balance act that you can perform? <laughs> how do you, you, know, you make sure that everybody's content and taken care of while your business is still running smooth? You know, part of the whole idea of of that need for to be able to create the freedom to create, the freedom to exist, the freedom to be here for my kids. Um, I love working from home. We bought a beautiful house. I, I don't need to be anywhere. You can connect with people virtually like this. Like I can feel your energy. You know, it feels like we're hanging out. You know, we just can't like buy each other a cup of coffee. We're not in the, the that room. Um, so I feel like I have friends from all over the world so that I don't feel lonely, but I structure my days around my kids. So I have a very young one. I just shoved one off to college. She's home this weekend um, already. <laughs> Um, but I have like, you know, I don't start work until 9am so I can get Christian on the bus or do whatever we have to do. And then from like 4.30 to bedtime, like nine, I, I block off that's family time. So that, and then I, I work late into the night if I have to, I work the weekends if I have to, but I make sure that I allocate those blocks so that he knows I'm here for him, especially because the older ones, you know, doing her own thing. Um, but, um, the balance is really important. And it's funny because Christian will put on YouTube and then he'll see a going commando and he's like, mom, everyone has a story because we have this whole thing that we're doing. <laughs> and uh, he's got our stickers all around. You know, we've got these these fun little stickers. So um, they're a part of what I do, but they're also a reason why I do what I do. Very nice. Now, when it comes to um, when it comes to speaking, and connecting with people that's something you've been doing for a long time now how do you how do you determine which which hat to put on when you're speaking some people need more pushing some people needs to be a little bit more laid back how do you decide what method is best for that person to get the most out of that person Mm. you know i'm a very fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl and i'm um it's basically like the energy of the person Right. So I can, I can get along with anybody. I really can. I see the good in everybody. I see, you know, what, what sparks them and what lights, lights them up. And that's why I kind of like go on. Um, I choose not to communicate too much with people who are kind of like, wah, wah, you know what I mean? Like people that are just like, kind of like on the asshole side of things or inauthentic side of things. Like they're just not, I don't really resonate. Those are usually cut short. Um, you know, we don't take on clients. We don't take on every client because not always a fit. Um, but if there's an alignment, it doesn't matter if someone's low energy or if they need to be coaxed or if they need to be, you know, whatever. Um, it's just a matter of uh, reading the room, basically. Nice. Uh, we hit 40 minutes. So awesome. Oh I, my goodness. I, I, did not, I did not fall into the asshole category, which is nice. You did not. You did not. You're awesome. <laughs> no, when I, when I speak with lots of successful people, uh, one thing that's very common is that they always say 
that they did not do it all themselves. Is there somebody that gave you one advice or one guidance tip that made you go, wow, I never realized that. I'm going to change that right away. Oh, well, Dana on the daily, she's basically my empowerment coach. And she has a saying in her book, and I'm not going to be crass here, but she punches you in the, you know what, sometimes like the universe will do that. (laughs) And she'll, she'll do that to me on the daily. If I'm not like, she keeps me in check every single day, but she also lifts me up. She builds me up. I am, I am who I am because of her. Awesome. Now, if we put you on the world stage and you have a few minutes to share with the world, one message that you want everybody to remember Angela for, what would that message be? Oh, just be you. Be authentic. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to just be yourself. Anything can happen. Life is magical. It's meant to be fun. (laughs) Nice and simple. Awesome. Um, Before I let you go, I got five quick rapid fire questions for you. First First thing is, if you're stranded on deserted island, one food to eat for the rest of your life, no consequence. Pizza. Pizza. New York pizza. Okay. Very specific. (laughs) <laughs> not Chicago pizza, not all that other stuff. It has to be there. Uh, Hollywood calls and goes, hey, Angela, we love your story. Uh, we want to do a biopic on you. Who would you cast to play you? Oh, um, oh my gosh. All the names are blanking out. <laughs> Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock calls you up. Actually, no, she just shows up at your door and goes, hey, I got cast to play you. Woo-hoo, let's have some fun. Let's hang out. And you go, don't worry about it. I got this night all prepared for you. What does that night look like? Oh my gosh. Getting in our jammies, putting the fire in the fire pit and making s'mores outside while my kids run around and listen to us tell stupid stories. <laughs> nice. Um, road trip. And you're in this car for hours and hours on end. There's only one song that plays for some reason. It's stuck. What's that one song you don't mind listening to? Um, Pearl Jam's I Am Mine. <laughs> nice. And my last question, but before I get there, give me a number from one to five. Four. One, two, three, four. So (laughs) if you had to relate success to a tuxedo, how is success like a tuxedo? How is success like a tuxedo? Yep. Interesting. Tuxedo as a metaphor. Ah, okay. Um, Always looking sharp. (laughs) (laughs) You've got it. You look sharp. <laughs> Guess, That's how yeah. success is like a tuxedo. Um, thank you very much for your time and uh, your your insight and your stories. Uh, very, very fun chatting with you. Now, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Um, go to our website, uniquelyphenom.com. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn. I think my handle is Angela Marie DeMarco. Um, definitely connect with me. That's the best place. I'm hanging out on LinkedIn almost every day, every day. And, uh, I've got a great network built up. We actually have a group that we're starting called the Ubuntu girls. So it's for the ladies, no offense, Fong. Um, but it's a private group where we're there to help support each other and lift each other up. And, uh, and then we also have the, those for those who rise and shine. So, um, if anybody wants to do that as an opportunity to share your story, build your network, expand your reach, you know, we're here for that too. Awesome. And any final words from you? Um, no, you are a wonderful, wonderful host. You're really great. I love your energy. I love everything that you're doing. And I'm really glad that we're connected now. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Everybody else, make sure you connect with Angela. She's obviously somebody that can help you out with your brand, your culture, or just have fun because there's <laughs> life is just for fun. <laughs> life is for fun. <laughs> you check out her, her content, also her podcast, her shows, always great stuff there. Uh, and until next time, she's Angela. My name is Fong Chuan. Today is the day to lock your peak potential. We'll see you later.